everybody. Welcome back to the Bluegrass Farmer. Uh, checking the corn today. I tell you what, I've grown some corn before, but I have to say, this is the best I've uh, I've seen this year. Or let me rephrase that. This is the best I've seen. Um, as you can tell, it's well over my head already. Begin to tassel out real good. Uh, I'm just really impressed with it. It's a uh, Silver Queen. Um, I do like the white uh, sweet corn, but I am. Uh, uh, I was trying to get some uh, uh, Ambrosia and uh, Bodacious sweet corn, which is more of, is a yellow corn this year. And uh, finding that is kind of like uh, trying to find a hundred dollar bill laying on the ground. It just uh, it's nowhere. It's nowhere to be found on seeds. But I've learned a whole lot this year with uh, this virus thing going around. And uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, things are gonna be changing on my end uh, later on to uh, get ready for 2021. So uh, a lot of things are uh, gonna be changing around here, uh, especially with uh, the way I operate. Uh, like I say, uh, if you noticed in the last videos, um, you'll go back uh, maybe a couple videos, you'll see some of the garden, um, the corn, when I planted it, you know, I planted it, spaced it real close together this year. I tell you what, I am uh, I think this is gonna be the trick. Uh, the only problem that I've got is, uh, of course, with any gardener, uh, and if you have a farm, is daggone coons and deer. So uh, uh, I figured they'll get half of it and I'll get half. So if I get a good mess this year of sweet corn, I'll be happy. I'll tell you what, the uh, stalks on this corn for your old, old timers, you know what a half a dollar looks like. These uh, stalks on here are huge. And I contribute that to uh, the nitrogen. Um, this year, I, I really throw the nitrogen to this corn. Uh, when it was like in a V4, V5 stage, I went through here and uh, side dressed it real good and uh, throwed the nitrogen. And luck would have it that uh, it rained that night, so it was perfect. And then um, later on, when it got to about waist high, I came back and did the exact same thing again side dressed everything and throw the nitrogen back to it and uh, I couldn't be more happier with the uh, with the corn there's uh, bees flying everywhere in here uh, you barely touch this uh, the tassels um, the silts fall uh, right in so they're just uh, I'm just really proud of my corn this year This corn here is uh, bodacious sweet corn. It's a yellow corn, and you can tell it's uh, it's really coming up there. Stalks on it are, are really big. Uh, I planted this later, of course, because you can tell the height. But uh, the sweet corn here, the silver queen, is uh, rocking out. There's nothing better than sweet corn to me. I love a, a good mess of sweet corn. Hopefully, if everything works out good, we'll, uh, we'll freeze a lot of it for the winter. Uh, I'm hoping it's gonna rain. They're calling for rain later on this week. And uh, if we get a good rain on this and uh, maybe cool down just a little bit, we'll be okay. But they're calling for temperatures getting back up to uh, upper 90s Thursday and Friday and the heat index of 105. So it's, uh, it's already warm now, but it's gonna get warmer. You can tell with this corn, it's just uh, the leaves on here, they're huge. And uh, 
I'm not a corn expert by any means, but I just don't see anything that's uh, as far as damaging. I don't see it uh, that it's really hurting for water yet. But uh, as far as diseases, now some of you corn experts out there could probably look at that leaf and tell me what was wrong. Um, I don't. I don't know anything about uh, corn except you pick it and eat it. But these leaves are healthy. They're huge. They're big. Big leaves. So like I say, I'm, uh, I'm really happy. So hopefully that uh, we'll get an abundant crop this year. So yeah, pretty uh, proud of the corn this year. But I uh, just want to give you a quick video today, show you uh, kind of the corn, how it's coming on. Um, like I say, uh, we'll uh, get out here later on and, and uh, as soon as it comes on, we'll pick it all and tear into it. Then this fall, what I'll do is I'll come back in here uh, and cut this all down by hand and make uh, shocks of fodder. So uh, we'll have decorations. The wife likes to do the fall pumpkin scenes with the shock of fodder and the squash and gourds and things like that. So she's gonna have plenty of shock of fodder this year. So uh, I'll come in here and just manually do it like you would tobacco, just come in here and cut it. And uh, shock it up, get her, get her fixed up for the fall. All right, folks, that's about it on my end. I've got, uh, things to do before it gets too too hot today it's still uh, early in the morning but it's uh, it's already warm so i'm gonna get back to going here appreciate y'all uh, being with me today and uh we'll continue to do an update on the corn and and things as it uh progresses through the uh stages and everything so everybody uh stay warm and uh just remember it won't be long the old man winter be here so you better be putting your stuff up for uh, uh, winter time. It's, uh, of course, everything comes on during the heat of the uh, summer, so that's when you need to start uh, canning. One other thing, I know my wife, she's going to be canning. It'd be 110 degrees outside, and she's already canning inside, so uh, we're just getting things ready. That's the way we do for uh, winter, so uh, there's nothing better than uh, going down to the cellar and pulling out a jar of uh, Roma 2 green beans and with six inches of snow on the ground and cooking those up. Same way with corn. So, uh, our time's coming. You heard it here. Be ready. All right, folks. Appreciate you being with me. Gotta go. Take care. Thanks for watching the Bluegrass Farmer. Tell me what's that chick's name on Fox News I like. Dana Perino, that's her name, isn't it? It's hotter than Dana Perino out here on Fox News. <laughs>